Everybody, welcome to the Early East Alert. Uh, Brian Good here. Uh, of course, we'll focus a lot on Irma. Uh, at least we want to talk about our, our weather in the short range, then we'll get into um, the details in a few minutes. First off, nice and quiet, 53 the degrees this morning here in the city of Louisville, the coolest we've been since uh, May 13th. A lot of you in the 40s this morning. Uh, we've got some high-level clouds streaming across southeast. Starting to see some cumulus develop there over portions of Washington and to um, uh, portions of Marion counties. Overall, we're going to have some, a decent sun for the next few hours, but it is so cold aloft, uh, it won't take long for the cumulus to develop. And this is going to be very similar to what you would find like in a lake effect snow event where you get that cold air behind these low pressures and you get those backlash snow flurries. You know, the ones that are usually the annoying type of snow. Um, that's what we're talking about, except it's too warm for snow. Uh, but we're talking about some cloud cover will break out, very speckled look to the satellite image later on, and then uh, some of those could contain uh, potentially some uh, sprinkles or maybe even a brief shower out of that. Our in-house model has a pretty good handle on this uh, today. It shows how, you know, mainly clear now, and then as we get into the heating of the afternoon, you see those little specklings there of uh, green sprinkles popping up, and those little striations in the satellite image, very detailed, showing that northwest flow uh, that we do have. That fades out. We get chilly again tonight, 40s, maybe even uh, touching 49 here in the city limits. That's a possibility uh, if we clear out in time this evening. And then as we get into tomorrow, very similar to the notice, the moisture tomorrow, uh, the deeper moisture is displaced a little more north and east tomorrow. So that's why the, right now we're going to keep the rain chance below 10%, and therefore it doesn't even show up in a lot of our data because we do that. Um, but it, it looks very, very minor. But um, overall, not a bad looking forecast the next couple of days. So let's get right to Irma. Uh, as of last check, now again, these advisories are coming out quite often, so by the time you're watching this video, it's probably already going to be updated. Uh, but Cat 5, uh, it's been going through the U.S. Um, and British Virgin Islands. Uh, here is uh, the animation so we're showing the eye wall went right over Anguilla. Uh, the images I saw when it was approaching uh, the island, uh, islands there is that a lot of devastation already. A lot of the boats have been destroyed, cars flooded out, and that's when they entered the eye, and, and I haven't seen anything since yet, so I'm sure we'll be hearing more about that here very soon if you haven't already. Uh, and then it's back over open water, then heading towards Spanish Town next as it continues its track off to the east, excuse me, to the west, uh, which looks at this point to go just north of Puerto Rico, but this is a large system, uh, so we're talking about the eye here. Uh, because how large it is, I mean, just about every single place this tracks is going to feel the effects of Irma. But you, when you get right there, you're that eye. That is when you're talking about those winds we have in that bar there of 185 and gusts 225. That's where those winds are. Otherwise, you're talking about winds of 75, 200, which is still impressive. Don't get me wrong. And a lot of heavy rain. Uh, but that, uh, that high, high wind is, is right at the core of it. And that should stay, majority of it should stay over water, but these little island chains got to watch out for, especially as we get into the southern Bahamas, uh, could certainly be uh, just sideswiped by that. Uh, but as long as it stays over open water, these little islands overall not have much effect. But look at the, ch the change in the models from yesterday. You know, we were showing that right turn. Here is uh, Katia, by the way, back here. It's one of the reasons why it's reacting, and it's seeing Katia, and like, okay, I got to go north now, <laughs> uh, because there's high pressure here to the north that's blocking it now, and it's forcing... Uh, Irma to go west, but that high is going to weaken as it moves a little more to northeast, and then you got Akati over here across uh, the Bay of Campeche, so therefore you've got an opening here, and that's what hurricanes want. They want an opening, uh, an escape route, if you will, uh, to get through, and that opening is going to be in this general vicinity, and that's where the models keep fluctuating on, because uh, it's trying to figure out who's going to get out of the way first. The high going to weaken to the north, and we get it, and then the hurricane thinking, of course, get a chance to turn quicker or is it going to be a stronger high for longer and therefore you have to wait until it feels the effects of Katia and then make that turn which would then put it into the Gulf. So still some questions on that and that's why these models are going to keep changing and, and the Hurricane Center uh, they got a tough forecast. They're trying to split the difference right now in the middle. Uh, certainly Florida looks to be the target area uh, either way that will find that gap in between both uh, of those pressure type systems to fit in between um, as it is a major hurricane at landfall at this point as a cap four but again it, it just depends it could go east it could go west you're, you're going to see this flip many times and make sure you see what the midday model uh, runs do today to see if they continue that trend to the east that we had earlier on uh one thing to watch is is the water all right it, it's in relatively warm water now um but the water really is warm here across the gulf eastern gulf especially upper 80s mid 80s in the gulf stream but you i really think that if this thing can get through the bahamas 
And if Irma can get through the Keys here and gets into this upper 80 degree water of the west coast of Florida, that is going to be a, a horrible situation for a, a development. I think the pressure could really lower on this, and this one could really uh, certainly be a five level um, with that much fuel at play. It could still be a formidable hurricane still on the east coast. It's still enough, uh, but certainly you got the fuel. But on the other hand, the other thing to keep in mind is you never want to be on the northeast or east side of a hurricane. That's the worst side you want to be on. And the way our coastline is, most hurricanes turn, fish storms, if you will. So usually just the west of the hurricanes brush the coastline. Uh, sometimes they can come into like New Orleans, like uh, Katrina did. And at that point, it was more of an issue of um, portions of Louisiana, Biloxi, was, got the northeast quadrant at landfall. And then you had Charlie in 2004, which came in at an angle into Tampa. And it, they got both, the east and the northeast quadrant, and that really did just a horrendous amount of damage. Now, it's, that's really the worst-case scenario. The way Florida sticks out, uh, if you get Irma on the other side and then Irma comes at you at that angle, uh, that, is, that to me, is, is going to be horrific. Uh, it's going to be horrific no matter where it hits. I'm trying to be, uh, I'm trying to explain things, but not let uh, down my guard saying that it's not going to be a big deal anywhere else. I hope you guys get that point. But... Uh, you just don't want to be on that eastern side and, and think that's uh, a big concern here. So a curving storm, yes, it's still going to be bad for the coastline here, uh, but uh, it could be worse if you were on the eastern side. I will say that. Okay, so let's look at two of the main models. There's a lot of different models that are out there, but two of them that we're, we've been watching, fairly good agreement. Uh, Euro is fairly strong with this. You know, Yesterday it was taking it right into Cuba. Now it's keeping it over open water, GFS, very close to uh, the Euro. They both have that turn taking place as we head into uh, Friday night and Saturday, and they try to hug eastern Florida and then it become a problem for the Carolinas. Now, this is also an area that you got to watch because, again, you don't want to be east or northeast quadrants. Those are the two quadrants you want to stay out of. And at this angle, that would be Charleston, Myrtle Beach, and, of course, Cape Hatteras, the Outer Banks, Wrightsville Beach area. It would pit you guys, or those of you that are watching from there, uh, would pitch you all in that zone is the worst case for very strong winds. So you don't want to be there, especially with storm surge. So uh, it's not good news either for that path, uh, but it is uh, at least that's what the two main models are seeing now. We'll see what they all say toward midday. And then as we head toward the weekend and early next week, GFS kind of just fades it out in general, and the Euro just brings it inland and just stalls because we have another trough moving in to our neck of the woods. And uh, the two may actually, all of this may merge together and kind of give us kind of a, a cloudy forecast uh, next week. I'll show you that in a second. Here are the ensembles. I'm only going to show the ensembles only. Here is GFS, here's the Euro, and here's Canadian. Here we are Friday night. Uh, pretty good agreement there, right over the southern Bahamas. Here we go into Sunday. GFS on the ensembles has it just east of, looks like, uh, West Palm Beach. Uh, the Euro has it very close to uh, Miami, and the Canadian has it basically east of Daytona Beach. And then as we get into next Tuesday, uh, the GFS ensemble is bringing it right on in from, looks like, Charleston right into about Charlotte. And the URL brings it in very close to, I would say, anywhere from Savannah to maybe Hilton Head. And then the Canadian has already got it out to sea and turned it away. <laughs> so Canadian's kind of out by itself. And then as we get into the later next week period, it kind of it gets wiped off the map because we have a trough moving in. So all this kind of gets absorbed. And that's why I think we'll get some troughiness and maybe some cloudy weather and cool weather, which I think is going to last for a while. So that's the overall setup, guys. We've got to figure out, uh, once it gets closer to Cuba, how much of an opening is it going to have to fit through here to get in between the two things it wants to avoid. And that is going to determine uh, the path it'll take and the turn it'll take. And, and the models are going to have a really tough time with this, um, especially when they, when they get this strong, this powerful. Uh, there are tremendous heat engines. And when they get to this level, it's really hard for the models to gauge it because they become an anomaly and you get some weird things that can happen. So you gotta go slow, just everyone be prepared. If you're in any one of those spots, the Gulf Coast, Florida, Carolinas, just be prepared and stay informed at your best thing you can do. All right, that's it for today, guys. We'll, we'll see how this all looks as we uh, get closer in time. Good luck to you.